Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Hi all, I am R. Samsamalli, Assistant Professor from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Satyabama Institute of Science and Technology. Let's start the session with a quote. Education is the best weapon for changing the world and it's our duty to use it wise. Um, with that note, we'll move to the session. So in today's session, we'll discuss about decision making and looping statements in C language. I hope you have uh, understand the basics of uh, C language and now uh, we'll move to the decision making statements or control flow statements. Usually the basic C program will follow sequential approach. So all basic programs will have sequential approach whereas uh, there comes scenario where we have to make a decision and based on that the flow of the program may vary. So for that we will uh, use control flow statements. So this particular control flow statement will decide the control, will decide the flow of the control. And the control flow statements it has three types. So one is branching decision making statements and the next one is iterative or looping statement and the other one is jumping statements. So first we'll move to branch or decision making statements. So this is the overview of uh, the decision making statements uh, and these are the inner categories and we'll discuss in detail. So decision making statements. Here in C language there comes a situation where uh, the sequential approach has to be changed. We have a condition and that condition has to be checked and based on the result of the condition the flow of the program may, may change. So for that reason we are using decision making statements. So here the decision making statements will alter the flow of the program. So here in C language the decision making statements are also called as conditional statements and in C language this decision making technique will be supported by these three statements. One is if statement and the other one is switch statement and the other one is conditional operators. Now we will be dealing with decision making with if statements. So decision making with if statements. So we have three types of decision making with if statements. So first it start with simple if statement. In simple if statement we have a condition and that condition will be checked. If the condition is true we have a block to be executed. So this is the syntax for simple if. So we have if which is a keyword and nearby we will place a condition. Based on this condition this block will get executed. If the condition is true, this block will get executed. And we will see the example program for if statement. See here we are checking for uh, the eligibility of voting. So here I have given a variable which is age and here so we have uh, received the age using scan of statements and here I am checking the age. So I am placing a condition. So age greater than or equal to 18. So here if the condition is true, this block will get executed and you will get the result. So I have given the age as 20, so you will get the result as you can vote. So and I am given as 18, yes again since we have placed equal statement, the output will be you can vote. I have given the age as 17. See the drawback of simple if is we have a block to be executed if the condition is true and if the condition is false, we do not have option. So that is the drawback of simple if. So giving like age as 17, I will not get the output, I will not get any error as well, but I will not get any output. So this is the drawback of simple if statement. So for that reason, we are moving for the next one, which is if else. So if else is the advanced version of simple if. It is same as your simple if, but still we will have a condition. If the condition is true, you have one block to be executed. And if the condition is false, you have other block to get executed. So that is the concept of if else. So this is the syntax, we have a keyword if and nearby that we have a condition. If the condition is true, you have this block to get executed and if the condition is false, you have other block to get executed. So as like in the program, you have a condition, if the condition is true, you will get, you can vote and if the condition is false, you have one more block which will print, you cannot vote. So we have two types of outputs. So this is the concept of if fails and we have a drawback in if fails. Both in simple if or it could be like if fails, we can check only one condition. There are scenarios where we have to check multiple conditions. In that cases, it will not help us. 
So for that reason, we are moving for the next level, which is nested if statements. So nested if, it is like if statement, if block within another if conditions. So here, um, in nested if, we'll be checking, we can check multiple conditions, but with a constraint. See, there come scenarios where we have to check a basic condition. Based on the basic conditions result, the further conditions will be checked. So for that scenarios, nested if can be used. For example, the same uh, example, uh, checking for the eligibility of voting. So, for example, if you want to check whether uh, the, the nationality of a person, like if, we, he, if he is an Indian, next you can go for eligibility of uh, uh, checking for the age. So, he will be Indian, that is the basic condition. If that is true, the next conditions will be checked, whether uh, his age is above 18 or not. So, that conditions will be checked. So, in those kind of scenarios, they will use nested if. So this is the syntax, we have if and nearby that we have a condition 1. See here if the condition 1 is true, the block will get executed, only then your condition 2 will get checked. So the criteria, the constraint here is that your condition 2 will be checked only if your condition 1 is true. Yeah. So condition 1 should be true, only then checking of the condition 2 will happen. So a if block has been placed within the other if block. So the example program is that is, so we have uh, three variables A, B, C and we are getting the values for that. So let me check uh, the uh, biggest among three numbers. So if A is greater than or equal to B, I am checking whether A is greater than B. If that is true, I should check whether A is greater than C as well. Only then I can say A is big. So A is greater than or equal to B and then if that is true, the condition 2 will get checked, which is A is greater than or equal to C. If both the conditions are true, I will print A is the largest number. Yes, so else, what happens? If A is greater than B and if A is not greater than C, what happens? I will print C is biggest. So if block has been placed inside another if block. So that is nested if and in else spot also we have placed one more if block. So let me check whether b is greater than c in else block if that is true i will print b is big either c is the biggest so this is my output and this particular program will be suitable for understanding nested if so what is the drawback in nested if see in nested if we can check multiple condition but with a constraint so, uh, whereas we will move to the next concept which is uh, else if ladder here we can check multiple conditions without any constraint so else if ladder is like uh, we can check multiple conditions. For example, if you want, want to check like 10 conditions, you can do with this. Like you will place a condition 1 nearby your if and the other uh, rest of the 9 conditions will be placed in else if block and finally else. So this else block is a default uh, block whereas so we will be placing all conditions here. So each condition will be checked. If a condition is true, that particular block alone will get executed. So this is the syntax if condition 1, so this is the block for this condition 1 and else if condition 2 and we have one more block for condition 2. Similarly, we can place n number of conditions here and finally we should have else block. And here this is the example program, the same program which we dealt for nested if which is the biggest among three numbers. So what happens here? So um, I have uh, A, B, C and let me check if A is greater than B and A is greater than C, if both is true, I will print A is big. And I have to check one more condition, which is B is greater than C. So if that is the case, print B is big, else print C is big. So this is the example for else if ladder and this is the corresponding output. So what could be the uh, uh, disadvantage in this else if ladder? In this else if ladder, we can check multiple conditions. But if you place like 10 conditions, if the ninth condition is true, it will check, it will check from the first, from condition 1. So all conditions has to be checked till it reaches else block or it reaches a true condition. So time consumption is what the greatest disadvantage of this else if ladder or it could be nested if. Next comes switch case. So we have completed with all kind of if like simple if, if else, nested if and else if ladder. And next we will go for switch case statement. This is the other possibility of decision making in C programming. In switch case statement, the time consumption where we uh, faced in uh, nested if or it could be in else if ladder, it will be avoided in switch case statement. We can have multiple blocks and based on the user's input, that corresponding block alone will get executed. 
So that is the concept of switch case. So it is a multiple or multi-way branching decision making statement. This is the syntax for uh, switch case. So switch nearby uh, switch keyword, you'll, you can place either an integer or a character. So based on that case constant, your uh, corresponding blocks will get executed. So whatever uh, case, if you have like integer, you'll be having the numbers or it could be the characters. So corresponding cases and corresponding statements has to be given. And finally, break should be given in all the cases. We'll be discuss break in shortly. So uh, whenever the corresponding, based on the corresponding input of the user, the corresponding statements will get executed. If none of the cases is matched with the input variable, then by default, this block will get executed. So this is the example program. So we have a variable and the variable value is assigned as one. So switch of variable. So I have given as an integer. So based on that value, corresponding cases will get executed. Here, since I have given as a value one, the case one will get executed, which is case one is matched. So if none of the value is matched with the case constant, the default block will get executed. So which is default cases matched. So this is the concept of switch case. So we can check multiple condition and based on the input that corresponding block will get executed. With this switch case, the decision making statement has been over. So in decision making statements, we have dealt with if and switch case. So we have seen with a draw by demerits of each uh, categories and we move to the next category. So simple if, if else, nested if, if else if ladder and then switch case. So with the help of these statements, we can achieve decision making techniques in C language. Thank you.